Hello, I'm Arno Kissel, and this is Brandon Italian, and thank you for joining us for another B2B Fab install video. Today we're going to be installing our complete lift kit package for 18 to 24 atlases on our 2024 Atlas Crossboard. As Arno mentioned, we'll be installing our complete lift kit package, which consists of the following components. Our MQB camber correcting lift kit, front sway bar end links, BFT blocks for fender liner relocation, hardware kit, rear shock extenders, and front strut mount and bearings. Now let's go ahead and do the install. First, remove the weather strip holding the wiper cowl to the rain tray. There's no need to remove the entire cowl. Just give yourself enough space to access the strut mount bolts. Loosen the 24 mm 12 point outer axle bolt at the hub. Loosen the three 13 mm bolts securing the strut mount assembly to the strut tower. Next, using an M6 triple square and an 18 mm wrench, remove the front sway bar end link from the strut. Then using a 10 mm socket, remove the bracket holding the brake hoses to the spindle. Remove the metal spring clip securing the brake hose to the body for additional maneuverability. With the axle bolt threaded halfway out, use a dead blow hammer to strike the head of the axle bolt, unseating the axle from the hub, then remove the axle bolt at the wheel hub. Turn the suspension assembly outward so that the outer axle joint can be removed from the spindle towards the front of the vehicle. Take special care not to extend or telescope the front axles at the inner joint. Failure to do so could result in damage to the joint or boot. Using a 16 mm socket, remove the lower ball joint nuts and separate the control arm from the ball joint studs. Now lower the spindle off the strut and remove the 13 mm bolts at the top to remove the strut spring assembly. We recommend securing the spindle with a bungee cord to avoid damaging the brake hose. If you are replacing the strut mounts or bearings, a spring compressor tool will be required to relieve the spring tension for disassembly. Reassembly. With the strut assembly removed, fasten the lower B2B fab spacer plate with the large center hole to the strut mount with a 6 mm Allen and torque to 30 foot pounds with provided hardware. Fasten the top spacer plate with the small center hole to the lower spacer plate and torque to spec with supplied hardware. Follow these steps in reverse for reassembly. Torque all bolts to the specs found in the torque spec section of the instructions. Now at the rear, if your vehicle is equipped with lower control arm covers, using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the bolts securing the covers on the underside. On the top, remove the plastic push pins with a flathead screwdriver. Using a jack, support the rear control arm prior to the next steps. Be sure to allow enough space to relieve spring tension. Using a 13 mm socket and wrench, remove the lower sway bar end link bolt from the control arm. With an 18 mm socket and wrench, remove the lower shock hardware and the outer spindle nut and bolt. Carefully lower your jack to relieve the spring tension and remove the spring. With a flathead screwdriver, unclip the plastic retainer and remove the lower spring isolator pad. The plastic clip will not be reused. With the rear suspension disassembled, now is a good time to install the rear shock extension kit. To begin, remove the 16 mm bolts from the rear upper shock mount. Remove the rear shock from the vehicle. Utilizing a rear shock tool, remove the upper mount from the rear shock. Apply thread locking solution to the shock absorber threads and screw on the shock extension. A piece of rubber hose and locking pliers can be used to hold the top portion of the shock rod to tighten to the shock extension. Do not exceed 18 foot-pounds. Take special care not to damage the shock rod. Damage to the finish could result in shock failure. Reinstall the shock bump stop, shock mount, and all hardware in reverse order of removal. Torque all hardware to specified values. And now we can continue with the install of our camber correcting lift kit. Install the rubber isolator pad on top of the B2B Fab rear lift spacer. Seat the rear spring onto the rubber isolator pad and place the entire assembly into the control arm. 
Then align the upper portion of the spring into place against the body. Carefully raise the lower control arm back into place and replace the lower shock bolt, control arm to spindle bolt, and rear sway bar end link bolt. Note, we do recommend using a floor jack, which allows you to maneuver the lower control arm into position to align the bolt holes. The use of a punch or screwdriver may also be helpful to align the bolt holes. Next up, we're gonna be installing our front adjustable sway bar end links. Using an M6 triple square and an 18 millimeter wrench, remove the OEM end links. Unthread the tie rod ends, apply supplied thread locking compound to all adjustment points and locking nuts. Adjust the links to their shortest setting and tighten the jam nuts. Next, tighten the upper nut to the shock tab and the lower nut to the sway bar and torque to 48 foot-pounds. Next up, we're going to be installing our BFT blocks for fender liner relocation. First, we're going to remove our T25 fender liner screws and pull the front fender liners. Next, we're going to loosen the two 10 millimeter nuts that are securing the OEM fender liner blocks to the car. The BFT blocks install in the factory location on the two studs on the inner fender. Sometimes seam sealer needs to be clearanced behind the blocks to have them sit flush against the body. Use the supplied 10 millimeter plastic nuts to tighten the BFT blocks to the body, making sure not to over torque them. While the fender liners are out, it's a perfect time to slot the key areas to gain more clearance to the tires. This can be done with a Dremel tool. With the fender liners reinstalled, measure six and a half inches up from the bottom of the fender liner and seven inches over from the outside of the body. This is where we make a mark and we're gonna be drilling a hole. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, mark a half inch depth with a piece of tape. Next, we're gonna hold the fender liner back against the BFT block and we're gonna drill down to our marked point on the drill bit. This makes sure that we have a hole that's deep enough for the fender liner screw, but without going too deep and hitting the body of the vehicle. If additional fender liner clearance is needed, an additional hole can be drilled and an additional screw can be placed an inch and a half lower below the first screw. Next, we are going to plug the original fender liner mount hole with the supplied plug. Depending on if we have any rubbing issues, additional adjustment may be required of the fender liners, depending on our wheel and tire offset or the tire we've selected. Installing our wheel spacers, we wanna make sure that the surface of the hub is clean and free of any dirt or debris. Simply put the wheel spacers on, align the bolt holes, put the wheels back on, and then it's time to torque our lug nuts to 90 foot-pounds. Now that we're all wrapped up, let's go for a test drive and see how it all performs. Thanks for following along for another B2B Fab install video. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions at all about anything you've seen here today or any of our products, please email us at sales at b2bfab.com.